This video is going to focus how to write an explicit rule for a geometric sequence when you're given a list of those terms. So as we take a look at these two examples, you can see that what we have is just a list. 120, 60, 30, 15. So they're not in table format, uh, so it doesn't really change our concept of what the rule is supposed to do. just kind of changes how we visualize that rule before we start creating it. Since we are going to be writing an explicit rule, we have to remember that n represents the number of the term in the sequence, and t of n is the nth term itself, so what is the actual value of it? So as we look at these terms, it's important for us to know which term is which. So I often ask students, which of these terms is the first term in the sequence? And pretty clearly, they're going to say that 120 is that first term which means that 60 is the second term, and 30 is the third term, 15 is the fourth term, so on and so forth. So when we talk about the nth term, 120 is the first term, 15 is the fourth term, and that's when n equals 1 and 4 respectively. So n is the number of the term in the sequence. When we're writing our explicit rule, we need to use this general formula. t of n equals a times r to the n, where r is the multiplier, and a is term 0. So as we take a look at our list of terms, we see that this is term 1. We don't have a term 0 listed. So what we like to do is go backwards to figure out what is our term 0, where you have to use your multiplier to get there, which means you need to figure out your multiplier as well. So let's take a look at that. So as our multiplier, and that's our generator, what are you doing each time? You can see that 120 divided by 2 is 60, divided by uh, 2 is 30, so on and so forth. So if you wanted to find your multiplier, that would be r, that would be that 60 over 120, which is equal to 1 half. So we have a multiplier of 1 half. You always want to multiply for your geometric sequences. So that's our r. We've got that. Now you need to work backwards to figure out what term 0 is, so you can write that out, and so then we would double it, and that would be 240 in this scenario. So there we've got our term 0 and our multiplier. As we take a look, then our rule for t of n would be equal to that term 0, which is 240 in this scenario, multiplied by uh, that 1 half, and it would be to the nth power, and that would be your geometric sequence. As we take a look at another example, if, we asked, if I asked you what is term 1, you would say that that is 4 and term 2 is equal to 12, right? And I like to underline them, so this is term 1, this is term 2, 36 is term 3, 108 is term 4. We need to figure out what term 0 is. In order to do that, we need to know what our multiplier is. This one's it's a little more straightforward because you can just see pretty quickly that r is equal to 12 divided by 4, where your multiplier is equal to 3. So we would have to divide by 3 to go backwards to get to our 0 term. So you're dividing by 3 to go backwards, where you multiply by 3 in order to go forwards. So 4 divided by 3 you would just write as 4 thirds. That'd be the easiest way to do that. Um, you could write it as a decimal, of course, but I'd prefer fractions instead. So t of n is equal to that 4 thirds multiplied by your multiplier to the nth power, and that multiplier is 3. And so that would be how you write an explicit rule for a list of your terms, making sure that you realize that the very first term that you see, which is given to you, is term 1. We have been writing our rules starting at term 0, so you have to work backwards to get there using that multiplier.